Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to read an excerpt from A Hat for Lima by Cecil Brown, winner of the 2022 Commonwealth Writers Short Story Prize for Canada and Europe. August 1858, St. Vincent. Rain pelt the whole night in the mountains. It silenced the animals that love to break my sleep. It joined the wind and lashed my tiny wooden shack, where the volcano ridge break for a bit of flat. Next morning, the sun battled back so fierce, the storm seemed like a bad dream. After such a stormy night, the ground is still slippery. Strange to spot someone struggling up the slope to my home, as I'm coconut oil in my hair. Caribs and runaways hunting wild pigs, I could understand. But a white man? And alone so deep in the mountains? From the narrow slit of a window, I catch the figure sweeping back the bushes like a paddler in a canoe. A heavy man with a red bulging food face. Mud splatter his trousers up to the belt. And the green jacket holding back his stomach catch a cake in two. This man brave. What could he want with me? I slip out the back door and take a path through the forest. Sometimes, best to greet an intruder hugging a tree. He made to take a step forward, his eyes on the house, as if it might disappear if he looked away. Before he could tell himself, not far to go, he fall flat on his back. Effing Satan. He staggered to his feet, furious with some dry stick he didn't notice in his path. When he finished brushing off his clothes, he finally beside him, my narrow face soft but closed to him. You tricked me, he growled. You friggin' threw me down. The blue veins in his neck pulse. This local born Creole white who blend our language with his. But I don't step back when he snarl and grunt. He on crown land, my land. I cross my arms and stare back. My name is Noah Brisbane, he say after a while. My horseman tell me, you know the island well. You guide people across the mountains and find those who get lost for a small sum. I dig my toes in the wind and force my body up the hill to my little garden patch, leaving him there muttering. Wheezing turn to cursing as he stumble up behind me. I almost finished picking herbs at the side of the house by the time he reached. I own the estate nine miles from Kingston, capital. Nine miles south of Kingston would place him in the Caribbean Sea. Nine north in Mespo Valley. West would find the town of Leu, where Reverend Alexander shipping his 200 slaves from Antigua because he cares so much for them. The Brisbane now squatting on a stone in my yard must mean east. Then, the Diamond Estate. I begin to pack a crocus bag with herbs while he sweeps the sweat from his forehead. My work is in listening. I ask when I'm ready. Brisbane take my silence to mean that I'm curious, so he says. You want to know why I'm here, I suppose. I don't answer him. My herbs are my living. Well, two weeks ago, I invited an Englishman to my home, Wesley String. The Methodist Church in England sent him to St. Vincent to report on the schools, but he's vanished. Schools? Brisbane asked the question for me, then continue. You remember emancipation in 1838? Well, schools spring up on coconut palm stilts. And where schools rise, inspectors follow. F in Brisbane. Emancipation handed some planters thousands of pounds. If February slipped by without a fet, then March pay with three. How long he here? One month. I sniff a bundle of thyme and let Brisbane carry on. I put on a small feast for string. Beef, red snapper, ham, breadfruit, bananas. We have to show our guests the best of the island, not true? My cook Eva did us proud. I pay her an extra shilling. 
Brisbane flipped his head back a little as his eyes closed on the memory of the meal. A chill hit us late in the evening, so I sent for a brandy. My wife Georgina changed into her green silk dress, and String drained his glass. Another tiddly bottle, he suggested. Hats off to a new friendship, eh, Brisbane? Creole white life, not our life. But Brisbane too sweet in his memories to care. String took his breakfast early on the Monday so he could go and inspect a school. He showed me his schedule. Another one on Thursday. Then join us for the governor's dinner up Fort Charlotte. I suggest to him, seven o'clock sharp. But he never arrived. I had my men out looking five days, but no good. I was ready to talk for myself. You try the taverns in Kingstown, I say. They tell me some men can't dung the rum unless women saw them. Not string. He rarely touch liquor. He swore to my wife when she was showing him to his bedroom chamber. Religious men toss a Bible overboard in the middle of the Atlantic. Some perhaps, but not string. What do you think happened to him? If I believe in spirits, I would say an evil one bundled him away to Dominica. I just pray no harm come to him. Harm? Caribs don't take to people on the land. Trespassing or plain lost? No difference. Every white is a British soldier. They don't spare the poison arrow. How much you paying to find him? Two pounds. Magistrate Anderson on thirty two pounds a month. I read this in the Gazette newspaper. So I tell Brisbane it or send your cook to search for him. I can't raise above three. Then particular on your way down the volcano. Eight, you said. Call it seven then. Seven pounds still need two hands to count. So I nod. Walk fast, Brisbane say. String vessel leaving in a month. We have to find him so he can fulfill his mission. Which school he visit? Stubbs, two rivers away. The teacher? The grim bull's ginger-haired mulatto brother and sister. Brisbane describes String to me as I guide him back down. Tall, bald, lover felt hat. Three men waiting for Brisbane at the base of the volcano and four black horses that could pass for brown. Clothes and animals all caked with mud. Earth don't separate black and white. As they about to ride off, Brisbane say, Send me news as you locate String. But not before his horseman Mel fix me a look that say, Come find me. One p- missing Englishman. Brisbane trek through thick bamboo forests and sharp cables for the sake of one white man. On every barracks he crossed, lame chigger for children and men who walk their body down to the bones and shrink back to boys. Women groan in agony when they shift from rust stomachs onto saw backs. But Brisbane willing to ride through hellhole estates where the stinking breeze make you want to faint. All because of some blasted inspector. When I think of the hole my family escaped, I thank the mother who encouraged my father. He laid the family off the solid property when I turned 12. One dark, damp night that drive the walkers into the barracks shade with heat and stubborn flies. We steal away and head north towards the volcano. We stumble and we slip. We shelter under trees high and low. All night we journey till the sharp stones of the river bed tell us we arrive. Even the trackers with their hung dogs fear this tangled mountain forest, creaking ghosts like bamboo trees, and squawking animals scare them away. And the stink of the volcano sulfur in the air protect us. We settle into a thin life, creeping by some estate at night to barter and to sing with the people, then crawling home in darkness or humming under kindly moonlight. What Brisbane know about me? That I live on fruits, vegetables, the wild pigs and a gutty we trap, and the crayfish and mullets that cram the nearby stream. 
that the Laman family I guide to a mountain home, race back to the comfort of flies, cockroaches and mangy dogs that infest the Punnett estate, that on rainy nights I peep out my wooden shack and long for someone to see out the storm with. Fartings, shillings, pretty pong notes, I see them at the market exchanging for sugar, for fruits, for meat. Shillings I handle, but my fingers never brush a pong note. A house, a bed, three chairs, maybe four. A coal pot, plates, enamel cups. Seven pongs could build two good-sized houses. But where to begin to search for some man with a stupid name? I close my eyes. Thank the Moravians who teach me to write, read, and reckon, and pray like a child who rather die than separate from her mother. The end until our next episode.